Okay, so how do you go about creating a digital commerce plan or an e-commerce plan? Well, there's a couple of little technical details you need to tackle first, right? You need to have a domain name, right? So you need to know what your website is going to be hosted by. You need to have an SSL certificate, right? And this is secure socket layer certificate. This is what if you see the HTTPS on the website name or you see the little key or the gold key some places, right? It tells a consumer that they're dealing with a system where their, their information is going to be encrypted, which is going to help you in terms of building a trust in your company, right? Um, especially when a consumer is sending you something like credit card information. Uh, you're going to need a little bit of hosting. Who is going to actually host your um, your website and the content that is going to have the transaction. And you deal with the platform, and the platform is how you're going to actually record everything that's going on and the payment mechanism. Right? So domain name, a couple of key words, there are a couple of key tips. Make sure it's easy to type, keep it short, embed key words in the domain name because that will help your search engine optimization. Target your local area if you only have local plans, but if you have, you know, state, regional, global plans, right? Then don't include, you know, don't be at like digital marketing rally if you want to eventually reach out to the rest of the world, right? Avoid numbers or hyphens. They often look cute and, and they're easy to buy, but people just don't like typing them and they make them hard to remember. Uh, make sure that domain name is memorable. Research it, right? Much like, I mean, essentially this becomes like a kind of sub brand name of your company. So make sure that it's unique and that other people aren't using it as well. Protect and build that brand. So if other people start to use a similar name, right? Um, unfortunately, given the way that copyright protection works in the United States, you have to defend that as much as possible. And act fast, go out and register that name as soon as possible. Um, uh, yeah. SSL certificate. No matter what, you will need an SSL certificate, right? Um, this enables you to provide encrypted communications between you and your consumers. And for digital commerce, this is basically required. Right? So you can go to a number of different places that will sell you, uh, that will put together essentially an SSL certificate for you that's authenticated by the appropriate authorities so that once you have this kind of unique number, right, you can have transactions with a consumer that are secure and you can guarantee that the information that are being transmitted to you can't be snooped on by somebody else. Hosting. You should choose a website host based upon their speed, uptime and performance, their reliability and accessibility, how easily they're going to scale up, right? So you don't want to choose a host that if you grow to 10,000 customers or 10 million customers, won't be able to handle you anymore, right? Um, and make sure the cost is always important. But uptime and performance is something that's often overlooked, right? I mean, obviously, if your company um, can't, uh, can't provide the ability to make a purchase on a regular basis, people will not make purchases, right? So every time your your website goes down, your your profit line goes down, right? So make sure that you that, that you've looked into the uptime performance of the system. And you know, if 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 you don't have enough internal support staff to really make sure that the website is being maintained and that everything's up to speed, make sure that they have that for you as well. So how are you actually going to provide the platform, right? Like where they actually go out and make the purchase. And there are a number of different solutions to them. There's uh, something called software as a service where you actually kind of essentially are renting a platform. You're renting the ability to make purchase. And Shopify is probably the best example of this. Um, you can also buy, you can also, sorry, not buy, but actually acquire an open source solution. So Magento is a solution that allows you to handle transactions, allows you to handle digital commerce on your website, where you can just go and grab the package, install it on your website, and run it from there. You can actually have the, the, the commerce side be hosted by a retailer. Right? So Oracle and IBM both make products available where they will host your commerce and your sales for you. Um, and of course, they give you great database access and everything like that in the back end. And then there's something called platform as a service, right? Uh, that allows the, your, per, your online digital commerce solution to kind of integrate nicely with um, a lot of your traditional sales services, right? Um, so, especially if you're doing like a B2B operation in which somebody wants to, you want to give people the ability to add in new orders on their own, right? And then you can invoice them correctly and all those kind of things. This is kind of the way you want to go. 
Um, so force.com, which is a Salesforce uh, a division, kind of provides this nicely, for instance. So after you've ta talked about what the website looks like, how you're gonna actually handle the transaction um, in terms of putting things in a shopping cart and like going to the checkout, then you need to start talking about how you're gonna actually take your mo their money, right? Well, you need a payment service that handles that. Um, and so you should find a payment gateway that carries out three steps, encrypts the user's payment data, generates an authorization request to the bank or the credit card that they wanna pay with, and then sends an acknowledgement to you to indicate that that money was actually transferred to your account, right? Um, so once you've got those five steps done, you essentially have a system set up. Of course, you've now sold something, but you have to fulfill it. So on the back end, you still need to provide the consumer with the product. So you need to have some sort of system that handles inventory management, warehouse management, order management, delivery, returns, order tracking, so you can provide the customers with those nice little things that say, um, this is where your product is right now. Many commerce platforms such as Shopify will assist you in this process, right? Um, so it's, it's often useful for a startup company to use something like Shopify, where they basically handle all this for you automatically. And of course, if you're doing all this great digital commerce, you can start to run analytics on what's going on. Now, of course, you might think about the traditional digital commerce funnel, where do users fall out, abandoned shopping carts, et cetera. But you can also look at things like product analytics, right? Monitoring what consumers say about the product after they purchase it from you, so that you know what to do with new products in the future or new services. Um, supply chain analytics, right? You can monitor what's going on in your actual um, fulfillment section, right? What are your storage costs? What are the refunds and returns? And of course, what this course is all about is looking at online marketing analytics, right? So you can track all the different online, social media, um, Google Analytics on your website, right? Um, whatever blogs, right? Uh, paid search, whatever you're doing and track it all the way to a purchase, all the way to the actual uh, delivery of the item and all the way to the review and the post-consumption purchase product, right? If you put all this together. So that's why analytics, of course, is so important. And that's why we've talked a lot about analytics throughout this course. Uh, but doing it smartly within a digital commerce space can really provide you with some excellent insight and hopefully really uh, provide you with good ways to not only um, decrease the amount of spend you're doing in different spaces, but also potentially even open up brand new areas uh, for products and services. Thanks, everybody.